Hello and welcome to this week's Gospel with the Gibsons. Tonight is going to look a little different because you see, you guys have been telling me that you like it whenever I interview some of my nearest and dearest pals. So tonight you're in for a treat. In a little moment, you are going to meet some of my dearest friends from high school. These guys have known me since I was 11. Actually, some of them have known me for a little bit longer than that. So be prepared as we talk about friendship, we talk about faith, and we talk about what we struggled with in high school, especially as teenagers who were trying to follow Jesus. We're also going to give you some things that helped us whenever we were your age. And they are probably going to share some embarrassing stories about me. And trust me, there are a lot. So without further ado, let's go meet them. John, are you online? Do you want to turn on your camera? I'm online. Are you ready for me? Big surprise awaits. <laughs> I'm really scared for this. Okay. I have dressed for the occasion. What do we think? Uh, you're Badges <laughs> and all. You're Prefect tie, your Prefect badge. <laughs> You're wearing your school uniform. Yes, I am. I like. I kind of prided myself on being someone who loves a good thing, but you've taken this to the next level. <laughs> is, is is it too far? Um, Just a siren's pass. <laughs> that's what the police you for me. What? You probably are more comfortable if you get into your normal clothes. So here, we'll pause the video and let you. I will do that. Change. Thank you so much. <laughs> See you soon. So, John, that is you back, having taken me down a visual memory lane of my old school uniform for those. Yeah, who this was slightly more appropriate. A little bit more 2020. A little so. bit more 2020 instead of <laughs> probably 2006 was the last time you wore that uniform, John. So, at, in the, the lovely corridors of Down High School. So, True. like, I'm equally, like, I've got nostalgia and fear, like, actually pumping through my body right now, having seen this. <laughs> That's not good. It's mostly excitement, though. I love the skill. Yeah. Um, John, just, um, so I thank you very much for coming on. Um, it's great to see you. Just for those, because people will not know you. Um, you're one of the special guests that people will not have met. So just... Um, I've never been described as a special guest. This is quite nice. I know, you're a special like, guest. Roll out the red carpet. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. And we're both gingers as well. So, like, represent. Let's do that. <laughs> represent. <laughs> So just, um, just introduce yourself um, so that our guys know a little bit more about you. Yeah, of course. So my name is John Hanna. I uh, go to Cardiff Baptist Church, where I also serve there as a deacon. And um, I work for the British Red Cross. And my role there is within national uh, project management for our work with the NHS, mainly. Okay, awesome. Wow. That, is it a, a busy job at the moment? Or? Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hectic. Um, uh, yeah, there's lots of things going on all around the country and roles that the Red Cross are taking on. Uh, we have a support line. We also help people home from hospital. And my role and my team's role is to kind of coordinate all of that and make sure everything's flowing the right direction and there's guidance available and people know that they have support if they need it. So the last time I would have seen you was whenever you worked on, worked on politics. So it's just very cool that you are like a little chameleon. You're like a little job chameleon. You just kind of like... <laughs> Morph and change, which is awesome. Yeah. So, John, every time I have somebody um, on a call like this, I give them the opportunity to share a story about me, perhaps your favourite story about me. Now, you actually, we know each other nearly 30 years. No, we do not, do we? Yeah, because of... That's yeah, quite some time. From having <laughs> Good News Club after school together and then being in high school together and then remaining friends afterwards. We've known each other nearly 30 years. So you have a plethora... Oh, Lovely, nice words. <laughs> I like to use yeah. big words. <laughs> so, uh, what? Uh, yeah, you can. The floor is yours. What? The, what the thing you that the thing that still makes me laugh to this day, and um, was it was actually a couple of years after school when it was on your wedding day, <laughs> and um, we were all kind of you know it was a group of all the school ones were together and chatting and and all of this, and you had gone off as you do with Paul to go and get sort of photos taken, you know, of the big day. And um, I remember sort of asking you, where are they going to go? I was expecting it to be something like National Trust, maybe in front of a big castle, you know, somewhere in Bangor, uh, maybe down the seafront, who knows? And then somebody said they've gone to Asda. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sorry, no, 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 no. <laughs> they've gone to Asda. And then they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, definitely. And I was like, I mean, has the car broken down? Like, what's going on? And then, like a short time afterwards, I saw the photo, and it was like it was you pushing the trolley with Paul in the trolley <laughs> in front of Asda, as you do. So, ah, uh, 
that's that's class <laughs> so um the reason why i woke up like from a sleep a couple of days before the wedding and was like i've got a great idea which happens quite regularly but nobody takes me seriously except this one was taken seriously so i woke up and was like it would be really funny if so asda and the church were right beside each other um in bangor if we could go to asda and i could get a picture walking down the aisle of asda would not be funny that would be a real funny punny thing um and so we did get the photograph um however we also got banned from asda and bangor as a result <laughs> um and so yeah and actually that is yeah so on my wedding day i got banned from asda and are you still banned from that asda have you ever checked <laughs> so every you know what everybody asks that um so we stayed away from it because we were so scundered for like about <laughs> three or four months after we got married and then just one day walked in and no one recognized us like our name or our faces were not put on big okay anything so that's good i think oh. i think the ban was fairly superficial but, but it's probably it's a true story. Yes. <laughs> so john obviously um i know that you were a christian throughout high school and one of the things that i'm asking um, everybody who's coming onto these calls is was there anything that you find challenging at um at school um so what what did you find challenging as a christian at school yeah uh, the thing i found most challenging was whenever i was 17 and life seemed, seemed to be great i had plans for what i wanted to do in the future um I, my family were christians i was committed to a church and um, everything just seemed to be going really really well um but when I was 17, the rug was kind of pulled out from under my feet. Um, my dad had suffered throughout his life with um, uh, depression. And um, sadly, when I was 17, he lost his battle to depression. And um, I was kind of left a bit like Job, you know, in the wreckage, trying to work out, right, what's next? You know, what's God's role in this? You know, what is going on? And I remember, you know, little things like trying to work out how the lawnmower worked. And realizing that you know my responsibilities and my position within the family had changed now you know i i now had to do some of the things that a dad was expected to do um even things like you know the sort of the the clock that sort of tells you how the heating works just remember standing in front of that and thinking I, I i'm not i'm not capable to do this i'm not capable to work this clock how am i capable then to look after my brother and look after my mom you know in, in this situation but the great thing was that I really did feel the presence of God throughout all of that, knowing that God was with me day in and day out. Like there were verses that came to mind just suddenly, like the one about, you know, how God is the father to the fatherless. And before that, it's the kind of one of those verses you just skip over. But it became real then. Um, or even again, getting back to Job, I think Job had a worse situation than I had. But whenever Job in all of his pain and anguish was able to say, the Lord gives, the Lord takes, blessed be the name of the Lord you know, learning that, that God is your God and worthy of praise, whether you're going through a really happy time and everything's good and you're singing from the rooftops or you're going through a really miserable, difficult time, that you can see that God is somebody who can be worshipped because he is in charge over everyone and everything. Thanks for sharing, John. Actually, just whenever you were saying about that, so I remember that we were very good friends um, whenever we were 17, 18, 19. And... Um, like I, so I journeyed a little bit of that with you. But one of the things I remember was, so do you remember Bebo? Remember I remember Bebo. Bebo the, the, yeah. you know, old, old person's Instagram or Facebook. Old, purpose, old person's TikTok, I think you mean. <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, whoopsie poopsie. Yes. Um, so, uh, but you, yes, you had um, a, the first line of your bio on your Bebo page said, I praise in storms. Mm. And I absolutely love that part of me. I think it was from Casting Crowns. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. But you, that's, I, um, you put that I praise in storms and that always really, really stuck with me because actually my memory of you and my memory of your mum going round to your houses, because we spent quite a lot of time um, in your house in the wacky room because you created a wacky room. But that was what I remember is, is that like, such heartache, such sorrow, such tragedy happened to your family, but yet you guys painted a room yellow and made it a fun room that everybody, everybody who had visited your house had to visit the wacky room at some stage because you guys really lent into being people who praise God, even though it really sucked. And I can remember just being completely in awe of your family because of that. Like, 
I, I really appreciate that. I Thank really you. I mean, it just we were just putting one foot in front of the other. It wasn't it wasn't planned. Um, but that was when we got working through us. You know that 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 you took that away from us, just limping forward and sometimes crawling forward and painting a room yellow and trying to fill it with happiness. Um, and it was my my Christian friends, especially during that time, yourself included, who were such a support in the early days of my dad dying. Um, sending texts and verses and then going on to meet up with me and check in with me and then ultimately help me on my kind of journey back into school and making that easy yeah. for me or easier. So I do remember oh thanks <laughs> I do remember there was a coffee shop it doesn't exist anymore but we rustic used to, rainbow. the rustic rainbow which I, somewhere near nearby genuinely I've got a cookbook of the rustic um, rainbow it's like we planned this isn't it we didn't plan this. This is actually that's hilarious. But we used they produced a cookbook. Sorry. No, no, right. But because we had just started to drive, obviously in that season that we're focusing on, and um, I can remember many a night with chocolate fondue. Do you remember yeah. eating this chocolate fondue? You, me, like a couple of others. Yeah. There was yeah. A, like the whole crew just basically taking over this coffee shop lesson, just playing board games and chatting and doing ridiculous things there was many a late night road trip true um and yeah so i do remember those days fondly but i also do remember it being a really safe place for people because there's quite a number of our friends struggling um yeah. at the time and it being a really safe place i think i cried more in table four at the Rock <laughs> rainbow whilst connect four was being playing than any, any other time of my life <laughs> so that was yeah our friends were quite helpful, which is pretty cool. With each other, you know, at all times, you know, no matter what people were going through, we could be authentic with each other. We didn't have to put on a front. We didn't have to put on an act. You know, if, if things were going wrong in our life or in our Christian life, um, we could we could say. Mm. Um, that was really a healthy place, like a safe space, as you say. So, John, you'll be glad to know that um, we're almost at the end of my interrogation. Um, but what I would love is, so I've asked everybody, what, if you could advise 14 year old John, what advice would you give him? Okay, so I would go back and I would say to 14 year old John, gather up all the money you can and invest in Amazon and invest in Facebook because they're going to be big. And then, and then I would now be rich. But, um, <laughs> but so that's the first thing I would say. And the second thing, once I hopped out of my TARDIS or DeLorean, whatever you want to drive, um, the second thing I would say is to, I would kind of help my younger self understand what God's role is in your life. That seems like a strange thing to say, but back then I kind of, my life felt a bit, well, anybody's life is a bit like a roller coaster. I think that's in the gospel of Ronan Keaton. Um, so life is a roller coaster, just got to ride it. Um, but yeah, I felt like there were times in my life where things were going really, really well. And I was, you know, it was almost like God was here and things were going really, really well. I was close to God. And then there were other times that I was far from God and things weren't going well. And there were other times, maybe sort of summer madness or, you know, SU weekend, I was close to God again. And then I kind of went off and, and, and I kind of felt some sort of connected dots that weren't necessarily there, you know, thinking that God was up here and, and I was trying to get close to him and far, close and far. But the thing that I'd love to say to my 14 year old self is it's not like God's up here and you're in life on your own. It's that God's in the roller coaster with you. No matter what you go through in the good times and the bad times, God's beside you and looking after you and teaching you through those things. So not to see life as this, yeah, close to God and far from God, but seeing life as a journey where you're with God and he's teaching you things through good times and bad times. That's awesome. That's great. Um, that's a great analogy. I love that roller coaster analogy. Um, Life is a roller coaster. You better ride it. Yes, yes. Ronan Keating, who, guys, look up Ronan Keating. Do yourselves a favor, just look up Ronan Keating so you know this. <laughs> it's very out dated reference that we have just pulled up but look it up but here john thanks so much for um coming on and sharing being vulnerable with us um and sharing a part of your story which i know would have been hard to share but i hope it yeah really appreciate I really it. hope that it encourages um our young people just to hear it so thank you for your bravery in that yeah no no more than welcome to and any questions you have for me please send them my direction i'm more than happy to answer any questions from the guys at BCV. 
Cool. Thanks, John. Um, we'll let you off the hook now. So have a good evening. You too.